Welcome back to Pucks and Deep, episode number 53 here, James. Yeah, it's a big one. We're Another riding. big guest. Big one, even bigger guest, uh, both in height, weight, and just, uh, you know, Steez here. <laughs> we got former Union Dutchman, current tower for Providence Friars, Jack Adams. Jack, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, boys. I appreciate it. Hey, pumped to have you on. Any uh, shout outs you want to give before? Because I'm sick of doing the edits afterwards. So let's just get <laughs> in the beginning of the show. Any shout outs you want to give? Uh, I guess on the new teammates, I guess Tice Thompson and Maddie Coop have been pretty two uh, really good guys who've uh, taken on their wing the uh, first few weeks here. So it's been a really you know fun transition at Providence. Most guys have really made it easy for me you know, in the beginning. Let's go. Yeah, two uh, pretty big names there, too. Uh, big Friars, but yeah, let, you know, let's just jump right into it, Jack. Like you came into the season as a top forward for the Union Dutchman, you know, hoping for a big comeback year after tearing your ACL and MCL uh, in the Red Wings development camp there. Uh, but then due to COVID, you know, seasons delayed, canceled for them, and now you're a Providence Friar. You know, what's it been like? Just this whirlwind of the last year or so, just trying to get back on the ice for you. Yeah, I think you kind of hit it right in the coffin there. It's been a, it's been a whirlwind of emotions, obviously. Um, obviously, nobody wanted the situation to happen at Union. You know, we had a pretty, you know, tough year last year, only winning, what, eight wins. And then, um, so we all worked hard last summer and worked our asses off to, you know, to try and get the program back on the right track. And obviously mm-hmm. the school made the decision that they thought was best for the community and um, we respected that. But as soon as that decision came, uh, I called my agent. We had to make a move pretty quickly. And then the whole recruiting process was, uh, was really intense, actually, a lot more intense. I would have liked it, but, you know, I always wanted to play for Coach Lee and then the Friars. And then you know, ever since I've got here, it's been uh, it's been pretty crazy. I got COVID actually right before I got here, so I got really really oh, sick. God. Um, oh, really, really put me back a little bit. Got really out of shape and got pretty banged up by it and stuff. So I just really got back on the ice like last week before my first game, like two days before. So I was pretty obviously gassed. And then you know, <laughs> the first game was um, it's pretty crazy. You know, my, my brother's number and playing on a new uniform and new team and stuff, new systems. But no, it's, it's, I'm still a little bit rusty. I haven't played in two years, so I'm getting the rest off. But the guys here made it really easy. The coaches have really helped me along the whole way, too. Yeah, I can't, I can't even imagine getting uh, back and going and skating, like you said, two days before your first game after. And what was the last time you played before that? Was it uh, 2019? Uh, was game three at Cornell, my sophomore year, which was March my 19th of 2019, I think Oof. it was. So. <laughs> that's a long time. My God. Yeah, that's skating out there against BU. Just a <laughs> little different. Yeah, it, was, it was weird. I was at the old like Walter Brown ring. wasn't up there uh, again. So it was kind of oh, yeah. different you know, scenery and stuff. True. Yeah. Well, at least you got first game back was a W. I mean, that's that's something. Yeah, that was a huge <laughs> one. We had uh, Moyni and Bernard back from the World Jays, so uh, we were we were clicking pretty well. One had a tough Saturday night, but no, we're we're you know we have a lot of depth up front in our team. Good goalie, good coaching. So I think we can hopefully make a run second half. I like that prediction here. You know what? Uh, what was that? You know, second time around the recruitment process like for you? Like how many? Uh, you said you reached out to your agent right away, but how many teams were kind of? I can yeah. imagine a lot of people would want you on yeah. their squad. To All help sixty them. teams. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It was. Probably around like 30, honestly. It was a lot. You know, it was just a lot of like, I wasn't like, it got to the point where I was like on the phone the entire day. And then, but like, it was just a lot of schools and you have to be respectful and talk to everyone and, right. you know, appreciate them reaching out and stuff. But um, I knew I, I kind of always wanted to go to Providence when it came down to Providence and Notre Dame. And then, you know, since Providence was just the best fit for me with being close to home and my family situation. And then um, obviously the program or the guys, I talked to a lot of the guys beforehand and I have a lot of familiarity with coach Lehman and the systems here. So it was the perfect fit, but it was definitely a pretty crazy experience going through that. Yeah. I can imagine 30 teams. Holy God. That's a lot. I just want to be feeling like just to be wanted by one team would be sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect 30 that. Big it, was, ones. it was definitely a little, uh, a little overwhelming, but no, it was pretty, pretty cool experience. So you can't, that but but i mean once once, (laughs) yeah i know i bet i mean once once you commit to providence though i mean now you're just looking towards uh your first game you know what what was it like walking in the room though and seeing your late you know brother's number in your stall and being able to wear that yeah i mean it was again it was uh i couldn't it kind of sucked that i couldn't get down there so i committed like right before thanksgiving and then i uh i couldn't get down there for uh like a month because there's on their first semester Mm -hmm. so the first day i went down there was the 14th i tested positive that day So I had to go back Good home God. for 10 more days, which sucked ass. And then I like got home and then was like really, really sick. And then they have the whole hockey use protocol, which is like, yeah. like 10 days of like workouts and like the EKG stuff for your heart and all that kind of stuff. So like it was, it was really tough in the beginning, but like my first practice was, uh, 
like two days before BU, I was just so tired. Like my <laughs> life was really, you know, fighting it. And it was real. It was a huge adjustment. You know, I was just getting back to game speed. Like, I've been training for a while the last year and a half to get my knee back. But um, there's nothing like game speed, and especially in the hockey is a little bit quicker than the ECAC. So mm-hmm. um, that was definitely a little bit of an adjustment at first. But I feel, you know, normal again now. But it's just, it's, it was really tough the first few days, man. But definitely, uh was worth it to get back in the game shape for it you and stuff right i mean that's just a hell of a, a start your first day back like holy shit <laughs> like oh yeah, great I, gas, I couldn't breathe up there <laughs> i got what about what's like your uh living situation right now like are you in a dorm or like how's that working out as a oh, transfer yeah so like it's my first day i got here they had me in a single and like my room was flooded <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> like, just I'm, having the toughest <laughs> time <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I asked if I could stay in their room, so I've actually been sleeping. The coolant that I mentioned, I've been sleeping in his common room on the floor in the last like months, actually. Oh my, that's so, great, uh, man! Let's go, yeah, pucks it's, deep. It's, it's it's been uh, it's been pretty blue collar here, but like <laughs> it's no, it's been, it's been. I have a single. I don't really go in that much. It's kind of away from the guys, and no one's really there. So the guys have been pretty generous, let me stay in their room for a little bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's I have a huge. single back, but I see these guys common room most of the time. I was gonna say, yeah, it's not like you can really couch it. I mean, you're a big F and dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> can't couch it. No. No, I, I, I tried that for the first night. I just didn't wake up feeling too good the next morning, so I kind of gassed that one. Oh, I can imagine. All right, I so mean, just my, an absolutely. This guy's been start. through it all. I mean, yeah. <laughs> man, he just wants to play some puck. Yeah, just know? let him play puck, man. And yeah, seriously, understandable. And we we really need this Bucks bet to hit then. I think from the sounds <laughs> of it, you know. Yeah, got no, any matches. No, they, they, they spoil us here though man like i was telling the boys like when i first got here i was shocked like how much food they get and apparel like these guys get like meals every single day to the rink like breakfast lunch and dinner like all this stuff like, what and, and, like you literally get like maybe two catered meals a semester and like the boys have to like go to the restaurant pick it up and like clean up afterwards like, you get post-game meals at union get, like these guys get like two, three meals a day, man. It's just, it's, they're so, they don't even realize how nice they have it. Oh, yeah. Amazing. They're just getting everything door dashed for them. It's amazing, it's though. Like, I was working WCHA, but, you know, obviously, like, no money in that either. So they got like two post game meals, yeah. and that's really sometimes a pre game meal. But yeah, two or three meals a day is insane. And that's what the Big Ten's getting. You're getting flights, yeah, charter well, flights. No, like, I will admit, though, like, you guys get it. Like, the chicken parms and stuff get pretty old after a while. Right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. You have that in the pink sauce every day for a while. It's pretty old, so I think the boys are kind of getting yeah. sick of it. <laughs> like, it's still it's still nice to have free food instead of going out there yeah. and grind. Yeah. It takes time to go get your own yeah. food too. Can't and complain too much though. Yeah, exactly. yeah, right. Yeah. But other than that, how do you like Providence as a campus and everything? Obviously, there's no fans this year as a fan base, but like, how, how's the campus? Uh, no, the campus is gorgeous. Like, I had some familiarity with my brother going here, so I was, yep. ever since I was like 10, 11 years old, I was going to watch him play and stuff, and slept over all the time with the guys. So I, you know, I know a lot about it. But the rank facility is ridiculous. Like it's, but it's, it's absurd, man. With like the rehab sources they have and the cold tub, hot tub. And the coolest thing is the basketball stuff though. Cause they have a pretty big basketball team here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they have this okay. like massive, like big East, like state of the art facility for those guys. And those guys are humongous, dude. Like I thought <laughs> I was a big dude. And like, I watched their game one day. It's like, they're like me, but like 20 pounds wider. And they're just fucking <laughs> enormous. And like, but, no, it's it's a it's a crazy. They really, you know, prioritize the athletics here. It's evident why they've had so much success the last few years here. Yeah. Do you ever get asked like, "Hey, are you a basketball player?" When they somebody sees you in the hallway or anything, <laughs> you're like, "What it's position?" Like, more like if I go out like in public at like gyms and stuff like that, I'm out. They always assume I play basketball, but in reality, I'm <laughs> terrible at basketball. <laughs> so, like, yeah, you're not like, much talent there. I'll get some rebounds, I guess, but yeah, just yeah, work I it out. I I don't have much awareness out there, but yeah. I try. Just be a presence. That's all you got to do. I like that. I, I think a good work out. a good morale guy. But <laughs> Everybody needs a glue guy. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, like I saw a tweet that you had on your account saying, you know, ever since you were 10, you visited Union with your dad, your brother, mm-hmm. that you wanted to be a Dutchman. You know, what was, you know, your your last two years before you got injured, I guess, or we can go three. You know, how was that experience for you? You know, what are you going to miss yeah. about Union it? Union was, uh, I loved it, man. Like it was... Um, it's it's a much different atmosphere than Providence. Like Coach Lehman and Coach Bennett are very similar in the fact that uh, they actually coached at it for a few years beforehand before Nate came to Providence. But at Union, it's, right. it's very blue collar. You know, obviously they had the national championship run, but Coach Bennett right. just gets the most out of his players. And I had a pretty good year in the USHL when I got drafted. My team as a freshman definitely think I was better than I was, and he really uh, 
you know, slapped me out of that and really you know, put me back, back to square one and made me work hard on the defensive side of the game. And we had two, you know, really good teams. We were both top 20 both years and, you know, made some really good runs. But uh, it's just an amazing, it's an amazing place, dude. It's, it's weird. It's like only like 2,000 students. So it's a really like small. Like, I don't even know that's like, small. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. Wow. But uh, like the ECAC fan base is so it's outrageous, dude. Like <laughs> the Cornells is it's it's there's not any conference in the country that can like top to bottom compete with that in my opinion. Right, I think like, every team in the ECAC is Union. Like for example, the ranks like not that great, but like we get three thousand fans every single night who are insane hockey passionate fans. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. Uh, the rinks sick. Like, I just love the roof there. Versus you go to ASU and none of those fans know what the hell is going on. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> probably that's what it is. I mean, yeah, you guys are like, oh, you guys are more like, oh, West, I'm guessing, right? We're, so, we're in Minnesota, actually. So, yeah. I mean, our yeah, fan base. I, I played in Fargo. So, like, I was like, all my teammates in USHL, like, all, like, Minnesota players. Like, yep. Lazada, St. Cloud, yep. Philly, and, uh, like, Benny Myers in Minnesota. So, like, Let's go. Like, I came out east and it's just. It's way different, man. It's just the fans in the ECAC. It's much more like traditional, like old barn. So like it makes that's it what I like. Right. I've I've yet to go out to the East Coast. So for any hockey, and I'm missing out on Cornell, Providence. Yeah, all we got to do some videos there. out there. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to make do that, man. Like it'd be a pretty cool feature for your show, like doing like uh, like a college game day kind of thing. And, like uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, like we just that. last year was our first year of the game day experiences. We just went to Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin. Like everything close, small budget. Yeah. Big, all big hockey programs, but and then COVID. I'd say the atmosphere, other than North Dakota, you know, is not <laughs> near where Cornell's or any of those teams out there. BU, Providence, yeah. DC. The ones I'm here probably for you guys would probably be like Maine. UNH is ridiculous. Yeah, and then oh, we gotta go to that. Cornell is just gonna throw the fish at the guys after the second period. <laughs> you know, it's 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 crazy, man. You guys would love it. Who do you say is your biggest rival right now? Who's packs the barn most in a normal uh, season? Uh, for Providence. Yeah. I'd say probably, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, it's, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't know as much of the guys here. If I had to guess, I'd say probably be you because of the 2015 Natty championship, maybe yep. maybe, them and maybe UMass Amherst probably. And you know, I think that, you know, Carvey and Rip and Nate are pretty uh, similar coaches. So they'd probably have a competitive thing going, but I mean, I don't know. Every team's, you know, our coaches make it seem like we're, you know, out to get them. So I, mean, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> say that like, who it is, but I had to guess for it be you because of the whole 2015 situation. And I right. agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, Providence is in a weird location, so it's not like next, it's not like a BCBU kind of thing, so we don't really like, have that kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. True. It's exactly. just a conference rivalry kind of action going. And you were at that game in 2015, right? Like dude, watching yeah, your brother take it home. That was the craziest experience of my life, dude. <laughs> Where were you sitting? Like, what, uh, walk me through it. Well, it's, it starts before that because, like, we didn't even think they were going to get the tournament because they lost in the second round to UNH and they just squeezed in as the 16th seed. Oh, and uh, that's right. played at the, uh, they got lucky though because, like, they got the 16th seed, but, like, they ended up playing the number one seed in Providence at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. So they played <laughs> Denver and then just beat them pretty good. And they played, uh, they played, uh, Miami of Ohio, which was like Rico de Blasi back in the day. And oh, he's actually shit. our hockey ups guy here in Providence. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> And then they played the Garden. They played uh, UNO the first night. That's why I like Genzel was there. They were nasty. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, that team was B sick. with Eichel and all those guys. And like, I was right next to the Providence bench. Okay. Like, from like me to my door. I'll never forget when O'Connor just like dropped that. I looked at the coaching staff in Providence. <laughs> they're like, what the? Just, like, <laughs> they were so like, <laughs> that really that just happened? Happen, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, holy fuck. Yeah. Just, that's pretty cool, though, just to see your family member raise that trophy. That's hard to win. I mean, right. 60 no, was, schools out there. My too, it was the last hockey game. It was in his hometown of Boston. Yeah. And then, like, after party was pretty sick. Like, it was like, it was like below the basement down the TD Garden. Like, oh. Butcher Gross is down there. And, God. Like, <laughs> I can only imagine yeah, what's going on. It was, it was so cool, man. It was, I'll never forget that. Was that your first time meeting Butchie then, too? It sounds like you guys have a pretty good relationship. Yeah, he's like one of my good buddies, but he, uh, that was my first time meeting was that party. And then he actually reached out to me like two years ago, which should happen. And then he's like kind of kept a uh, really good relationship. Good. And we golfed last summer a few times and cut to dinner a few times. And he is actually, uh, on my brother's foundation for like the golf tournament stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's a super, super, super human being, but he's awesome. Can't say enough good things about Bushy. Cool. Right. Yeah, he's just and what he does for the game, college hockey too, right. is huge. I actually, mean, giving it like the I was so platform. pumped when he started doing that. Yeah, and he's like, that's it's yeah. needed. It still needs it, and uh, yeah, need, yeah, you need should, more should be an NHL announcer at some point. Like, Absolutely. So yeah, I'm. Yeah, I don't see why he isn't right now. Like, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to do it. I don't know. But yeah, he should be. Yeah, 
definitely, definitely does. I, I just think I don't. I don't think that ESPN has prioritized hockey as much as you know. They no, don't, not even but they, close. But they yeah, should. So like, you know what I mean? I think if you if you ask the, the average American, like hockey's growing. I would say baseball and lacrosse and soccer, like in this country, are like taking a backseat to hockey nowadays. But they still yeah. like, refuse to you know recognize that. Absolutely, I have to right. agree with you. No one, yeah, and it's like I just need to is, get down south. I mean, it's strong on the east coast and midwest right here, but even yeah. west, west and down south, it's not. But yeah. just like televising it, like even if it's on ESPN, yeah. it's ESPN two, and that's only the Frozen Four. Well, now that you see, like Notre Dame has a handful of them, but NBC Games is huge. Yeah, like for college hockey, need more so. of that going too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, NBC has like the Notre Dame game stuff like that, which is pretty sick. Yeah, no, they just need to this get more teams true. on there, but um, yeah, it's we'll not fair there. that Notre Dame gets them all. It's such a good recruiting piece. <laughs> <laughs> you're on NBC yeah, 10 times. Yeah. Wild, dude. It's just an uh, amazing, amazing program they got going. Yeah, like you said, they were one of your top two options, you said? True. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. Was, it, was, no, it was, I remember like the coach FaceTimed me like a tour of like the whole facility and I was just like, it's was, <laughs> it was a COVID, another COVID tour. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> yeah. it was nuts, man. They're, they're a really nice coaching staff and they were really supportive of me going to Providence. But no, I, have a, I have a bunch of buddies there, actually. Minnesota kid, Michael Grant. Oh yeah, is, uh, he's gross. <laughs> he's there, so oh, yeah, not bad, <laughs> not bad at all. Absolutely. Talk about this COVID in itself, though. Playing through the season with no fans, like, what is that like? You know, how do you get going before a game or during a game? Yeah, it's. I mean, to be honest, you don't really notice it that much once you're playing. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, it's nice when guys are watching you, but like once you get on the ice and you're playing, you don't really like recognize it as much. But like, it's it's weird, dude. Like, it's, I think it's more weird after like big hits or big goals and stuff like that, having no life in the building. Yeah, yeah. That kind of sucks, you know. I think every hockey player's dream is to like score from a crowd and sell you and like all that kind of stuff. Like, it's just, I don't know, dude. I mean, I, I'd be shocked if we don't have fans back this season, this season, this season next season. Like, this shit's got to end, dude. Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. I'm with is, is, and a vaccine is going some, around now. I think know? there's NHL teams that have some fans. Is that correct? Have you yeah, seen? Yeah. Arizona had some. Last yeah, that's what I saw. Arizona had some, but I don't know if anyone else got any. But right. that's that's good sign at least. Well, some college there. hockey games. That, I mean, fuck Huntsville had like fifteen hundred. Yeah, Huntsville. Was bad. Like <laughs> it's the most they've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was at the point I remember it was like that's been the biggest crowd of college hockey. I was like, let's go, Huntsville. <laughs> and they got the sweep. Fans like Fargo like has fucking. Oh yeah. They have no mask in the building. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like, <laughs> come if you want. You know, Fargo does not Why care. Not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, COVID out there, right? Yeah, they're like, oh, I'm not paying for all this fake crowd noise. Let's just no, get people in just, here. It's unnecessary, dude. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it is weird though, man. Like you can't, I think that's after goals though. Like there's not really like a home court advantage. You know what I mean? Like right. Every game's the same for everybody. Well, like, can you, you know, hear like, just like everything that <laughs> both sides of the bench are saying, like from the other team and everything, like any chirps yeah, on the ice? That, like, that's Jesus. also the weirdest thing is like, you can, like our, I think Nate likes the alter refs. I mean, I, that's <laughs> what I've noticed with maybe every coach does. But yeah, right. You can, you can hear on both sides, like every single thing they're saying to the refs. <laughs> it's, it's the funniest one. Like, I wasn't playing the first few weeks, so I was like watching up top. It's mm-hmm. kind of hilarious. Like, listening up top, the coaches yelling. <laughs> you don't focus on from the bench. You know what I mean? Right, right. You're just in yeah, the zone. Yeah. yeah. You're up top, though. You're hearing all the fucking chirping. <laughs> Jeez. It's really funny. Tune it down. That's funny. It's going to be awesome. Just sit back and, like, so this is what happens. Huh? No, it's, right. you briefly mentioned the USHL, though. You know, talk about your development at that level and what that meant, you know, to your game today. Like, how did that propel you? Yeah. Get to no, where I you had are. A pretty, uh, I had a pretty tough first year. Um, I had like a decent points, but I was just not really mature in my game. My defensive side was definitely mm-hmm. struggling. I was in that lineup the first year and I took a lot of, you know, pride and went home with myself in the mirror and put a lot of work in that summer down in Cape Cod with uh, Coach Vincent, a bunch of guys at Union. So we put a lot of work in and then I came back that fall like pretty confident and I actually almost got cut at camp. I was in the fifth line with like two days left and I walked in his office and just asked like, what do I have to do to make this team? And he told me a few things and then had a really good weekend. I made the team. Luckily, I went from the fifth line to the first line like three days. Yeah. <laughs> my line mates, we had a we had a crazy year. Like uh, it was like we like leading the league in scoring and um, just had an amazing you know chemistry on and off the ice with like Lazat and Hank Crone and it really you know changed my hockey career. You know that second year and Coach Eads was just a guy I talked to weekly. Still, he's like a second you know parent. He's always been watching my games. and criticize me when I need it, you know, pump my tires when I need it. So it's it's the best league in the country, I think, for development. Absolutely. Yeah. College or pro, man. It's, it's the draft picks they get nowadays is absurd and it it prepares you so much for college hockey. There's nothing like it. It's just, it's an amazing experience and 
for Fargo, like the facility. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. I have. Like top of the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably nice than most college drinks, honestly. It, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to agree it's with you. They, they, they spoil us pretty bad there and we get like 4,500 a night. So <laughs> it was, it was the best two years of my life, man. It was like all, all, my, all my best buddies were still there. So it was a crazy, crazy experience. Yeah. When they took you aside and they said like, this is what you have to do is the first thing pucks in deep. Or what yeah, block shots, you know? In, you know <laughs> <No>. <laughs> no, Tell you what, Jack, all you got to do. <laughs> it's simple. No, get, get blocks in, yeah, a little shout out to you guys uh, there. But no, it was, uh, no, we, we had a pretty crazy team. Like Tuff, though, was in the team. He's the leading scorer yeah. in college hockey now. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Um, not bad. Like, was the NHL. Yep. Like Mitchell Chafee, uh, South Minnesota. Like Ryan Bishel's a starter in Notre Dame. Like, like we had a fucking good team, man. And, no, it, was, it was a wicked fun experience, but uh, no, I, I loved it there for sure. That yeah, stack team, and then what, 37 goals he came out of there? So, yeah, it's, it, he did pretty well. Let's get <laughs> punched into that yeah, first line. I was uh, parking my ass in front of the net, and <laughs> got a lot of tips and a lot of goals, hash marks in. But the, I don't know if you guys know much about Blake Lassat, but um, I do, yeah. The boy, you know? Yep, he's, yep. He's my linemate. He's the best player I've ever played with in my life, and he's my best friend. We talked literally every day of the week, and his hockey sense is just. We uh, I I talked to him briefly via DMs and stuff. We're we're planning to have him on, but he's busy with the kids. Yeah, get him on, man. He's yeah. he's a riot. Boy. he's oh uh, yeah. He's just he's so pass first, and I'm wicked shoot first. So it was just, <laughs> it was the perfect it's a match made in heaven. I think yeah, what we should box in deep and made plays. And- <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, he can talk on St. Cloud season. They're having a year too, and uh, I think he got. Yeah. I think he scored last night in the game versus the Wild, I believe, or two nights ago, one of the two. Yeah, he did. Ago. He's like playing second line center with SMCU and Carter. So yeah, that's a good, dude. Carter looks so good this year. That's a good line. I like. Yeah, Blake they should really be two and zero. Oh, honestly, we're Wild their fans, but we'll take it. Was crazy. I, I got lunch with uh, him last with him last year, like when he was playing Boston. I was home rehabbing it. Oh yeah. We're just like we're just like there in Boston, and like. He's just like sitting there, and like Jeff Carter walks in, and they're like, "Yeah, you guys want to like go uh, buy some Apple Watches?" And I'm like, no, I don't have that contract, but sorry. <laughs> just go casually buy. I'm like, no, like, no, like what? He's like, I just really want to see my heart rate today. Fuck it, just go drop 500. You know, it's, yeah, that's like a good time. Guys buying like fucking like AirPods and like Apple. It's the way they live, dude. It's and, like they're like they have like all these fans falling around the city. Like it's it's the dream, dude. Yeah, well, yeah, living in LA, fuck. Yeah, that's, that's got to be tough. Just on the beach with a bunch of girls playing the show. I mean, yeah, <laughs> got a tough life, man. Just brutal. Lizzo, Lizzo's coughed, you know. She's, she's not really getting that, but <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Little still, th- just being in LA and playing hockey. I don't know how it's gonna get better than that. Yeah, in the show. No, but... his, his house is sick. He lives with uh, Mikey Anderson, a Minnesota guy. Actually. Yep. Yep. Oh shit. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, Sweet setup. Really nice spot, and uh, we're in the beach. It's pretty sick. Damn. All right, well, something to look up That's, to. Yeah, you know? we got to get him on the pod. We'll get him there. Yeah. We'll get him there. Facts. Let's take it back on track here. What, what do you want to go on? Uh, well, I did want to address one thing here, Jack. So we're starting a new segment. It's going to be pretty short. <laughs> we're doing, uh, you know, this week in court for ECH. Uh, <laughs> and we, we know you're still getting your feet wet, you know, but in three games, at least on the website for the Friars, we got zero block shots. What do we got to do? <laughs> To, to get those numbers up because that's that's the main thing we're watching for here. <laughs> I'm gonna rip them right. Yeah. Okay. I, just throw a pair of balls, I, <laughs> I think they're avoiding you because obviously you're a big target, but they're like, "Fuck, he's gonna chase me down I or something." Yeah, like it's it's kind of funny. Like I'm not proud of it. But I've always I haven't been great at that my whole life. Like my sophomore year, I was like, like Rick Bennett like walked into the. Uh, he, it was like February, and he like had a big piece of paper like on the uh, like our stat lines sheet, like where the, the lines all that kind of shit is. Yeah. And he had like all of our stats. He had one thing highlighted it was like thirty games in, like fifteen <laughs> Adams, like four block shots. <laughs> <laughs> like, and oh, that's tough. Like, like fuck me. And it's like <laughs> ah. <laughs> with the highlighter, you're like ah. Like it, everybody can see it. I <laughs> So I wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't too proud of it, but no, I, I, I got to get better at that. Well, all the boys do it. Or I guess it's a, uh, I don't know. I get, I'm definitely uh, not great at that, I guess. Hey, hey, that's our version of the highlighter. Now, now you can turn it around. You know, it's been pointed out. Yeah, what did we had auto on, and then you had like four blocks. Yeah, the next game. Yeah, we we have a tendency to nudge people in that direction. So <laughs> if you want to f- eat a couple, you know, we'll highlight them. We'll throw them on the page, and we'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah, I get a credit for court, eh? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll just say a dollar. We'll just say a dollar <laughs> for now. Uh, Nothing big, but yeah. What about uh, you know? You guys are coming off a big split with Maine this yeah. weekend, and then. Uh, I mean, UMass is the next guest coming up, hopefully, with 
you know, shit changes every goddamn day. Yeah, knock on wood but uh, yeah, like what's the uh, what's the game plan in the yeah. in the locker room for you yeah, guys? Yeah, main was main was good. Like obviously we didn't uh, get the outcome we'd like on Friday. Yep. You know, I thought we had a lot of, we had a lot of opportunities. We just didn't really we couldn't finish. Like and coach really stressed on poise and you know putting the puck in the net game too. And we did that. Got contributions from all four lines and. Mm-hmm. I think they're one of the best goalies in the country and Jackson Stauber. You know, the way he prepares is amazing. Um, he's just a, an unbelievable guy. And it's kind of like uh, under the radar, but his uncle, Pete Stauber, is a U.S. congressman. Like, that's like pretty nasty. Oh. No one talks about it besides me until I got it. Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> I was going to say, that, that last name just sounds familiar by itself, but I couldn't yeah, put it so together. I, I think that, like, she could address once in a while. Boys don't talk about it, but that was cool. <laughs> But we have like we have some of the best players in the country. Like Tyce Thompson, obviously is mm-hmm. um, you know, he's probably one of the best players I've ever played with. You know the way he uh, prepares and the way he works is just it's so impressive. I think off the ice, you know, he's a, such a good guy and such a good teammate, and leader. So he'll have a long career, whatever career avenue he picks. You know, obviously his brother and his dad are NHL guys too, so he has you know some shoes to fill. But just an unbelievable kid. And our, our back end with Benny Mirages back there. Callahan and Crozier, Mac, and we have a lot of depth, man. We just got to put all together, and the coaches are putting, you know, good systems in place for us. We just got to go execute it. Right. Absolutely. So. And you guys are putting up some big, big fucking numbers. Like, what do you hang seven on BU uh, the first yeah, night? We had seven B, we just, I think, I think the story of our season has just been like it's a little bit inconsistent with our starts. I think we've, you know, sometimes come out of the gate. It's that's, I think that's also a testament to the crowd, you know, kind mm-hmm. of. Not much life in the rink, right? The team, you know, so yeah, different. Um, I think that's definitely something we all would like to, you know, get better as the year progresses. But I think we have the guys in the locker room to do it. We just have to, you know, go believe. We have a big weekend coming up for UMass. Obviously, they've had a hell of a year with. They have a great team, great goalie, great coaching staff. So we'll have to really have a good week of practice to, you know, get ready for them. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that tilt. And UMass was I think it was seven in a row wins tonight until they just lost to BU tonight. But I mean they yeah. lost tonight. Yeah. Yeah, like four to two. Just was it four to two final? Yeah. Okay. yeah. BU BU's good, man. Like they've we they were you know, they were gassed night one against us, but night two they really, you know, they played pretty well. They're a really good hockey team. Yeah, yeah they think, got some fucking skaters there. I mean, when it comes down to the tourney, though, it comes down to just experience and usually a hot goalie. But, you know, you guys yeah, had the pieces to go back to the tourney this goal, year. I mean, dude, look at, look at the province team 2015. Like, if yeah. the Blazers are like, not doing that. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, and uh, you guys got some older guys now. You lost Dugan, but, I mean, you got the pieces to get back there. I mean, anything can happen once you get to the tournament or playoffs. But, uh, right. you know, talk good, talk about your experience. Just, you know, you, you've, been, you've been through everything in life, it seems like, and you're also an yeah. NHL draft pick. Um, but what what exp- what advice are you giving to younger guys in the room and younger guys and juniors? You know, trying to make it to college. Or yeah, no, I mean, college? Uh, I think just kind of just like trust your path and be patient. I mean, I think a lot of uh, shit has transpired to my family over the last two years that you know we didn't really ever expect. And I think you have to learn to embrace those kind of challenges and use them as motivation. Um, I think once my brother passed, I was definitely, you know, struggling mentally, but the game gave me an avenue to, you know, forget about that for a little bit. And then once my injury happened, that was probably the hardest thing I've had to deal with, you know, hockey wise in my life, being away from the game for so long. And I just realized like how much I loved the game once I was gone. I I actually stayed home last year and I didn't, uh, you know, go to campus and watch games. It wasn't healthy for mental health. And I watched the games from home and talk, talk to the boys through FaceTime and stuff like that. But, um, it's just tough. And I think you really realize, you know, how special the game is, whether it's meetings or workouts or just getting dinner with the guys and stuff like that. Once you, you know, get that taken away from you, you know, it's, it's really hard. It's hard not to get emotional about it because it's such a special game. And I think guys really often take it for granted that boom, you know, your career is over. Yeah. So I think for those yeah. guys live in the moment, enjoy every single second because it goes by fast and you have those challenges and adversity on the way. You have to use that to fuel you and drive you and, my motto has always been to uh, go day by day with a long-term goal in the back of your mind at all times. And that's what I've been going with my whole life. And it's, you know, it's got me to this point. So if I keep doing that, hopefully I can, you know, accomplish my dream going forward. Absolutely. Well, that yeah. was yeah. really good. That was really well said, man. That's, uh, yeah. you know, I'm sorry you've been through what you've been through, but you're making the most of it. That's for sure. And you're inspiring people like me, anyone in the hockey world that listens to your story has heard your story. Um, it's definitely right. come off as inspiring and, no, a lot I appreciate of people. you guys really, you know, keep my bro's legacy alive. That means more than you guys could have imagined. So you guys, the Instagram posts and tweets, that stuff is, uh, I really appreciate that. 
Well, man, that's the least we yeah. can do for sure. And uh, anything else right. you want us to post, man, we, we got you on that end. And this is going to be, I'm excited to post this podcast for sure. Right. Um, and we got a shirt coming your way. I mean, yeah, more blocks, absolutely. maybe get you one of these zip ups, you know, I mean, <laughs> can work our way to something. <laughs> Did you just say more blocks? We can get yeah. you a zip up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's fucked, buddy. Hey, I mean, you're making like, him work his way up on our apparel line. He said long term goal. Uh, I'm throwing it out one there. Day, one day at a time, guys. Awesome. Yeah. I do want to touch on the draft, though. You know, you did get to hear your name called. What was that like for you? By the Red Wings there? Uh, it's, it's, I didn't, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't know I got picked. It was kind of fucked, actually. <laughs> God, man, you do not have it's a tough life. I've never been called John ever, like, in my life. Like, I told my Jack, yep. like, I saw, like, John Adams on the screen, so I didn't really think much of it. And then, like, a half hour went by, and then my agent called me. He was like, are you happy yet? Like no, dude. Like fucking drafts over. He's like, oh, you, you got drafted. <laughs> <laughs> like they picked some John like, Adams like, over me. Like, yeah, like Troy John Adams. I'm like oh, like that's that's pretty embarrassing on my end. But no, it was it was a crazy experience. With you know, I, I think it was I definitely thought of the Fargo experience of almost getting cut, and then it was kind of crazy going from being the fifth line in September to you know getting drafted in June. Mm-hmm. I think a huge part of that is you know Blakey and Coach Eats and the guys there. But that was. uh experience that changed my life you know forever and um hopefully i can you know wear the red and white eventually in the future but if i keep working at providence and keep winning some games here, hopefully i can get there absolutely man Excellent. we know we think you can too and it's uh just, yeah one right. day at a time like you said so yeah. well, congrats on Puck being drafted Steve, though grinding. and getting to the point where you're at now do you want to go a quick speed round we got like five minutes left oh shit yeah let's do a speed round here so we're just gonna throw in like animations and stuff but you know quick quick questions here uh you want to start the first yeah, yeah. Uh, We're going to go right away. Um, you're new to the team here. Um, who's your favorite guy on the team to play with? Favorite guy? Wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to go with Tice Thompson. He's probably my, my best friend since I've been here. We hang out every other week, so I'm probably going to go with him. Okay, okay. What about uh, best guy besides yourself? I mean, my God, right yeah, now. I'm going to pick him. That polo, yes, uh, yeah. near the button now. But who else has best guy coming to the rink <laughs> on game day? Best guy coming to the rink is either Davis Buns or Matt Kuhlman for sure. Okay. And Berard thinks he has some good stuff going, but his hat is atrocious. <laughs> so his glass has got to go, but they're trying. Was he wearing like a fedora or something? Or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's five foot seven. He has his fucking you know, huge ego with the looks, but he's got to, you know, it's coming down a little bit. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> Just <laughs> through yeah. the Well, now he'll know. Now uh, hopefully he'll listen and, and, and figure it out. Uh, what, what about music wise? Who's got the ox in the locker room? Who's got the Who's got the worst playlist in the locker room? Uh, the yeah. worst is Divine. I mean, he's, <laughs> he the thinks he has good music, but he does. And I'm probably gonna go with Jason O'Neill. Guy's electric, but the uh, the phone in his hands. So okay. I'm gonna go with that guy for sure. God, this guy's just ready. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, you got yeah. it. He's, he's ready. <laughs> what about uh, you know first Selly for when you're in, mm. in a Providence jersey? What's it gonna be? The first talk. Uh, to be honest, I'll probably point to this guy, my little bro, watching the bus for sure. I love Absolutely, that. man. Okay, so we just got to ask that now because when it happens, we're gonna put it together. Just, yep, just like we did for Otto. So that, get that, clips, one out that clip's way. coming. Yeah, clip, clip done. <laughs> what about uh, pregame routine? What do we got? Uh, it's too long. I'm I'm really OCD, so it's oh, kind of no, embarrassing. <laughs> that, you know, I'm, I got some really weird shit going on. I nap every nap, same meal, same time in the rink, uh, same stretches in the same order, okay. same tape job up to like. It's, it's a lot. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's a process, though. Uh, okay. you know, I don't, well, I don't, use, I don't like use my phone and stuff like that. Okay, good to know. All right. What about uh, what's the worst chirp you've ever gotten? Ooh. You gotta think. I, I get called giraffe like three times a game. So six, six. <laughs> God, like, that's that tough. Was pretty bags. It's been used so often, but no, I mean that's probably really it. Just the giraffe one. Do you do you chirp a lot on the ice? No, I, I laugh at it. I mean, the only chair I've ever had is, like, I felt bad, actually. We were playing Frank in high school, and I was at Roman Catholic, and I looked at the scene, and I was like, hey, this is your last game ever playing hockey. Hey, enjoy it. <laughs> oh I felt bad, but it was unnecessary. I felt nice to sign it all. It was fucked, but that was it. Do you ever look back and, like, confirm that it was his last game? That'd be awesome. I <laughs> mean, the way he was playing, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's tough. I love it. Yeah. Oh, guys, this is great. Guys, just stick to beer league for now on. You know, <laughs> looking back. He's having fun though, probably. Yeah, I hope so. You know, it's, <laughs> my God. What about uh, you know? We already set this goal, kind of. I did in my head. Over under twenty blocks for you the rest of the way here. What do we got? Well, I'm at zero now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's time. A lot of games. A lot of games. A lot left. of time. A lot of time and space. Uh, Fuck, I'll take the over. I'll, I'll be fair, though. Yeah, <laughs> they're loving that over. All right, I'm it. betting it. I'll find a bookie. Last question, not uh, speedrun related, but what do the Friars have to do to get back to the championship here? For you to hoist that trophy. Friars got a 
just believe, man. I've, I've been a part of some winning teams, and we have the guys to do it. It's just every single day, you know, being like a pro, whether it's practice habits or being at the gym or, you know, Coach Lehman talks about being a 24-hour athlete. You know, it's pretty, you know, guys, I think it's cliche, but it's actually, you know, it's important. And I watched firsthand how Reed's 2015 team did that. And um, they were just there to play hockey, man, and they're best buddies for life after that. So I think the guys who do it, we can believe we can do it. Hopefully we can get it done. Love, Love it, man. man. Boom. Speed that's, all we, that's all we got for you, dude. That's That was yeah. great. I mean, all around every question we had a lot more like prepared, but you answered your question so thoroughly that you took out a lot of them. So uh, <laughs> you're answering multiple questions at once, man. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get you on here. Yeah, Natty and hopefully see you in a tournament whenever that's held. We'll yeah, see you here. absolutely. Or in Pittsburgh. Sure. Yep. Uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, That'd be a good last time. We'll see you boys there. And uh, keep, keep up the great work. Man. You're doing a great thing growing the game or that. So. Hey, man, I appreciate it. That yeah. means a lot coming from Thank you. Thank you. So. And we are we play favorites, so we're big Friars guys this week. Absolutely. Every week now. Remember that. Every <laughs> week, but especially this week. This is a big one. Yep. Yeah. Watch over 14 and White Coobin. Guys got a hot stick right now. All right. Shit. Fair enough. Uh, there noted. It Everybody. It's noted. Everyone's going to hearing that. So. Yeah. We'll be watching. But yeah, again, Jack, appreciate it, man. This was awesome. We'll be, uh, Absolutely we'll be in touch. Go Bucks, I guess, for you guys. Yeah, go Bucks tonight, man. <laughs> Take care, fellas. Bucks yeah. Have Later. a good one. See you. See ya. <laughs> What a rap, man. The guy's yeah. beauty. Dude, he Post was grass. Red yeah. Wings draft pick. This guy can do it all, man. He's been through hell. That was, just, that was an Dude. honor doing that. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. The amount of shit he had to go through. I mean, the, he shows up. He's got COVID. His room's flooded. He, sleep, he it, couches it for a night. He's six six, sleeping on a five-foot couch. I mean, welcome to fucking college, baby. And yeah. then he's still getting pucks. Probably on over on yeah. top of that. Oh, I for mean. sure. My God. And then he shows up just buttoned down the, the glass at the heart. She, showing tat right, right here. Yeah. yeah the oh, specs God. were there. I mean, he's already partied with Butchergrass and under the garden. And like, how many people have partied? He said he had COVID and he looks fucking yoked right yeah, now. Like, yeah. You lose weight on COVID. Watch out for Providence, man. This guy's already had the trophy in his hands with his brother there, too. So he's, he, yeah. knows what it's, he knows what the feeling's like. So like, I feel wait. bad for you, Mass. He's... God, he's gonna throw some shit around. Like God, that you're our guy. I wanted to ask, but I, I feel like I was gonna get a hell of low. a story. But I wonder how many fights this guy got in juniors at Fargo. Yeah. I mean, he's probably one punched a couple kids. Who the fuck calls him giraffe and lives? To yeah, s- like what? <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I would not do. No, but that's no, that's good. That's good Lord. stuff, though. Big, big, uh, big guest there from the Friars, and good to be back. You know, last time we tried to get a Friar, the guy was landscaping back to back days. This one went a little better for us. That's true. Yeah, that shout was, out Dukes. <laughs> Jack Dugan, another great pod. You guys might want to go back to listen to that one. Yeah, we'll be on the Bruins soon this year, or not the Bruins, the Knights. Yeah, oh, we're, rolling. Oh, we're rolling, baby. We're this rolling. Is, yeah, twenty four seven with this shit, baby. Don't don't wait <laughs> yeah. up. So yeah, uh, again, pretty pretty jacked to have on a fryer this year. I mean, they're gonna be there at the end of the year. Like, what are they? I think third or fourth in the hockey East right now. Had a slow start facing BC. I mean, that's just a tough, you know, couple punches to take. And our boy Adams wasn't even there. Now they got him. They got a big lineup. Yeah. Tice Thompson's a wagon. Yeah, I think uh, it'll be a big series kind of I mean, showing what they're going to do against UMass. Every, every story we just brought up there, I'm just I, I'm sorry, I'm just stuck on this. Like, he always yep. had, like, not – he answered it very well, but something happened to the Something, guy. yeah. I mean – Holy hell. Just, and now I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling good betting the Saints just because this guy's had some bad luck. Oh, F off, man. But, I, I mean, <laughs> he didn't know he got drafted. He, he <laughs> saw John Adams and didn't even know he got – I mean, it's my dream to go get drafted in the NHL, and this guy missed his own name getting <laughs> – Right. Well, but is he still – he's still a draft pick. And yeah, yeah, I mean, just a guy who's clearly battled to to stay in the game, and obviously it's paying off for him. But nothing's yeah. come easy, and that's like that's a guy you don't want to see at the rink when it's it's all said and done. Because yeah, it's gonna, he's got experience in two different leagues too. I like I like how work. he um, talked about the you know the game playing the ECA, seeing the fan base there compared to yeah that um, hockey good. East. I think that's the first like com- like in depth comparison I've heard. You know, I talked to some writers and everything, but having the players' perception of that is pretty cool. Well, they do have crazy fan base. I mean, you look at Quinnipiac, even yeah, the yeah, Teletubbies, no. like everybody, like even a school like uni said 2,000 Dude, that's students, what we should do, a video 3, right there. Fans a game. Not to get on Quinnipiac, but if I get to dress up as a Teletubby for a day, can you imagine that video? That would be pretty sick. Just one just one yeah. game, Teletubby. What color are you going? Uh, Purple, probably. Purple? Yeah, I like the purple Skull. guy. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I yeah. like that. Okay, yeah. so we're going to do that Go video. to class all day as a Teletubby. <laughs> just GoPro my ass and then just yeah. Just have a flask and like the little belly. You should get like a flap kind of thing. <laughs> just leave it there. That'd be sick. All right. Yeah. Of water. A water, water flask. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just the fan bases are crazy just there. Ever tell a W. <laughs> Can I join you? Because what is it? Just one tell just the, No, it's four. Just yeah. The ECH let's crew get the boys. Just blitzed on the glass. Tell a <laughs> 
we join them, it's just like a wall around the rink of Teletubbies. Dude, what if they had a Teletubby out, man? That'd be nuts. They should. No. I'm, I'm putting that idea in there right now. Yeah, what do we have to do? All their PR for them? Like, yeah, pff, that's what we are. We're everything called. Hey, yeah, shout out to true. Jack. Thanks for the compliments, though, man. We love growing the game. And yeah, what a uh, beauty. Yeah. It's always nice when you have a guest who wants to be on and also follows the page, you know? Yeah, and he knows the ins and outs of college hockey and what it takes to get there. And like he said, he almost got cut from his Fargo team. If that happened, he wouldn't be, you know? Yeah. I I mean, he wouldn't have been drafted and all that stuff. 37 goals later, yeah, it it paid off. And and he was like at the game 2015, you know, he followed his brother, obviously, growing up playing hockey. Mm -hmm. And then he got to like go to like the after parties because I'm guessing the guy was already like 6'5 in fourth grade or whatever. I mean, mean, this guy unit. probably drank Pick Whitney before anyone else got to. Like yeah. that's how cool this guy is. I mean, he's been everywhere. So he's had hair on his chest since he could walk. I yeah. Mean, just oh God. I, I wouldn't want to drop this mitts the mitts with this guy at the next level here when he's on the mm-hmm. wings. But uh, you know, you see the, the, the tad on his arm. I was like, God, this guy could just one punch yeah. me quick. He looks like Kyle Rudolph already. Just, yeah. You know, <laughs> six, six. He could be a tight <laughs> end and then you just got the sleeve. Damn, just jumped it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's all I'm saying. I think uh I don't know. As far as this season and them getting back, they have the pieces, like I said, but they need to step yeah. it up. More block shots, a well, lot they, more pucks in deep, but yeah. Yeah, so it's a good thing he came on because... Uh, I, I think mean, it's only going to do him well. We are the Rick Bennett for him now. I yeah. mean, here's the highlighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, here you go, Jack. Uh, I see zero block shots <laughs> here, and then if we could just get that to about a 20, yeah, I think we're going to get... You know, big things are going to happen. They need a sweep. You know, I don't know if it's going to be against UMass or UMass Lowell, the guy coming after that, but they have yet to sweep a team this year. They've been splitting every every series since Boston College. Hey, who so. knows, man? It's a, just... a sweep against UMass would, you know, maybe put them in a, in the top ten. Yeah, I'd say. yeah. So we'll see what happens. Excited to watch the game, Jack. What a guest coming on! We also Absolutely. have some hockey to talk about. We do. This past week was uh, pretty insane. Not good I for the top my, ten. Not, not good for the top ten, but my as far as watching college hockey, some beautiful goals and one of the best weekends of hot college hockey so far. Yeah, it's been loaded. You love to see those teams. Like we said, Western Michigan, we had Ethan Frank, you know, just a stud come on the pod before the season. They've had a yeah. tough start, and then they go out and not sweep him, St. Cloud. Ethan's had a hell of a year to start. Yeah, well, yeah. he's been tearing it up. But I'm saying Buster and the Broncos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Buster's been a little too much time at the bar, more time at the rink, Buster. And now, sure enough, yeah. they get their first home game, and there's a sweep. So mm, They were going in. I mean, I could not believe that. And then you got the go first going down too yeah well Notre. i mean they didn't go down like notre dame really they took it they played smart and just yeah, yeah they won those they deserved those games and uh, i wouldn't want to be at practice at mariucci tomorrow but at least they were close we uh we had lauren bench on the pod uh, yeah earlier this week and yeah. uh apparently wisconsin was watching because uh, yeah. they took a vengeance on the gophers and women's hockey there so another number one both number ones going down tough to see especially when we had a lot of gopher posts going on the page but you know yeah. we're gonna move on yeah, it's a, it's a new week. We're gonna we learn our rankings. lesson. Yeah, it's a new week. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. We'll That's move on. We'll with. move on. Uh, Another right. big guest, but you now shout out to Lauren last week too. Her post went off. I mean that that podcast post. It's right. Damn near three thousand likes and just growing yeah. the game for women's hockey. So shout out to Lauren and thanks for coming on again. Great uh, pod. I'm yeah. just saying tough week. Tough week. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we're moving on. Uh, Michigan took it to Ohio State. Another mm-hmm. sweep there. I, I don't think we called yeah, yeah, many yeah, of these yep. series correctly. Uh, just going through them. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I think we went over just around the league. But you know, I what? did That's say part split of for college the, hockey's tough for the to Gophers. I you think did. You said sweep. I did say not to bring that up. Yep. No, thanks. Uh, then we got uh, Penn State. Mich- Penn State sweep in Michigan. That happened. I think I picked Michigan State to sweep that one. Yeah, too. you did. Yeah. I think I did split. The, I, I went. I was kind of a bitch. I said split everywhere. So I'm going to be Combs right. scored again though. Shout out Combs again. Another podcast guest yeah. that is just excelling after coming on pucks and heating it up. Heating it up. He I mean, I mean, if I'm Jack, help. I'm juiced right now because our podcast guest after they came on. True. I yeah. mean, Eric I mean, Otto, do we have to say it again? I mean, no, he had like don't. seven blocks in two games after yeah. he came on and, right. and he had a goal and an assist. Kawaguchi's up for Hobie. Yeah. Frank's got 10 goals. Combs has had a year so far leading square for Michigan State. Perunovic um, is wearing a fedora. With I think the he won the Hobie trophy. too. Yeah. Yeah. Now I mean, he's just yeah, battling for a blue spot in the uh, roster there. So. Swayman uh, caught his biggest fish right after he came on the pod. Yep. I'm yep. just assuming. Now he's, yeah, he's trying to get, I think it's third goalie for the Bruins right now. So, yeah, not a big deal. No, we're, we're doing well here with the guests. And again, huge shout out to Jack for coming on. That's, that's our honor. And it's, uh, right. And man, it's so fun to get, like I said, so under the radar right now, too. Besides his story, like, I feel like people have forgotten about his talent because he hasn't got a chance to showcase it that much yet. Right. Like, yeah. He's been out a full year and then he's only played three games so far. And he like just he had said, COVID. He just had COVID. He's coming off of it. Like, he's not sleeping on a bed right now. <laughs> <laughs> the man is about to go off. So this is buy early, sell high. Okay, yeah, buy yeah. low, sell high. Yep. This guy's going to be a wagon. Excited to see. We just keep getting back to him because he's such a bro. Yeah, and I just, I, man, I'm like. All roads lead back to Jack at this point. Every week I say like, oh, that's my favorite podcast. <laughs> like, it, it just yeah. keeps getting better. You know, we get better as we go on, but the, the guest itself too. It's it's mm-hmm. cool to have all these like different players go through different experiences
we're lucky enough to hear all of them firsthand and experience it. But right, we wouldn't have this. You know, I think this kid's this kid's been you know not not comparing stories. Otto, obviously, Otto's been through a lot, but like this kid's been through another. Yeah, yeah, just a, a grueling life. Or like every time he he earns something, he's, he's getting a setback and has to go right back more. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that what I just said makes sense. What I'm saying is, <laughs> okay, right, keep going. Everything that he's gotten, he's earned it along the <laughs> way, and and then some. I mean, my God. So just. Shout out to him, and it kind of just makes you realize what these players go through to yeah. you know play at the highest level. Yep. So. Talking about teams earning it, though, we're going to go back to Western. Huge sweep Oof. over St. Cloud this week. That yeah. was my biggest shock of the week. I didn't see. I didn't I didn't even think a split was going to happen. Yeah. I think I called St. Cloud sweep. Yeah, so, I think we both did. Tough, but uh, Western back on the map. I mean, they're 5-8-3 and three right now, but uh, I mean, the yeah, NCHC it's, it's has a such season. a tough schedule yeah. that if they keep this kind of, I mean, you start splitting with Nodak or maybe they sweep Nodak, who knows? Mm -hmm. They could easily get back to the top 10 if they're playing like that. Like, they would look good this weekend. So yeah. that was a big one. UConn over New Hampshire sweep. Yeah, Crookshank out for, was it one or both? I think one. it was just the second yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, but still. Second one, they really, 8-3 to three on Saturday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, UConn That, that Friday good. game, I watched that. That was uh, overtime. I just watched the end of it, but. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that was pretty crazy. That was what uh, we put on our page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, missing that open net. Can you imagine if they uh, lost that game? Man, that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then it happened. You know, to the Canes last night. You know, they hit the post to make it right. Like we have four seen two, and, where... and we score with point two seconds left. Like, ah, oh, that hurts if you're if you're quick and the Canes there. But uh, yeah, but we'll take that. it. We'll take the win. We we'll... had a uh, half off Papa John's because of it. Or yeah, I did. I don't know yep. about you. And I won a lot of money off it. So thank you. There you go. Thank you, Minnesota Wild. Thank you, Kings. But, yeah, thank you, Kings. Also, we should touch on the dub shot. We had uh, Mankato sweeping uh, our our favorite mittens there. Unfortunately, <sighs> at Lake Superior. You know, I thought. I mean, Mankato yeah. is just so effing good. There's not much you can do about They're it. They're definitely the best team in the WCHA, and that's there's no really debating nah, that. I mean, Bowling Green's Bowling Green's right there, but Mankato. I mean, they're just handing team. Bowling Green's just. Do they ever play Mankato? Yeah, year? yeah, they'll they play should. Mankato. Yeah. Okay. Well, I gotta check that. Let me check this because I, they're split in the WCHA, so I don't know if they are scheduled to play them. They can have to play each other. Are you serious? They don't play. Well, maybe because. Uh, Let me see. They do next weekend. Two weekends from now. Two weeks. Okay. Three weekends from now. Fuck. February fifth. So yeah, you, that will be a hell of a series. So you you think Bowling Green is way worse than Mankato? Like, how much are you putting Mankato above them in WCHA? Not a lot, but I mean they're number three in the country right now. Oh, are we gonna put the Gophers below Cato? I don't even want to think about rankings, but uh, I would say possibly. I would say I would say everything's on the table right now. I would say Mankato sweep right now. That's how strong I watched. I watched. I've watched a couple series. Yeah, and just their their depth is deeper than Bowling Bowling Green's top two lines are probably equal to, if not better than Mankato. But after that, Mankato's depth is just yeah. I think four lines of pucks in deep. I mean Bowling Green. Uh, let me try to find their Cruz and Ford man, and they got that Colin goal was not like they got talent on their team. No, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but uh, like like we said earlier, it's going to come down to goaltending in playoffs. But it's yeah. probably going to be those two teams. Maybe the Beavs. I won't rule my Beavs yet, but. <laughs> you're gonna throw your peeps in there that's like talking like kobe Lebr or not lebron or michael jordan you're like ah maybe kobe <laughs> <laughs> just throw it maybe harden hey why not on a left field don't throw out the bees don't throw out the bees throw they got they, a win over bowling green and that's what split. scares me they did split with bowling green. they did not come close to beating mankato no the bees did not. okay so yeah i would give it to mankato just because i'm not picking against Ryan mckay and like you said they're just deep that's I mean, what I'm saying. Dryden's this is his year, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were trying to like find Hobie candidates for their team, and I think everybody was with after last week before yep, these yep. sweeps happened. Everybody was within one point of each other. It was like nine, eight points. Yeah, for like seven guys deep in their lines. Ooh, so tough to play against. So yeah, if we're talking rankings right now, obviously the Gophers getting swept. They're moving down. Mankato's moving up with a sweep. Same Saint Cloud's with, moving down a step. Bowling Green. So a lot of moving parts here. And then we got BC. I mean, they had a tough one Friday or Saturday night. It was close with Merrimack. They Still won. Up. I mean, yeah, I'm saying they won. They, yeah. they, they're, I think they're clearly number one just because Nodak hasn't played yet. Yeah. Nodak's playing tonight as of recording this pod. So that's only one game. So yeah, rankings are going to look a little bit different because just a lot of teams actually showed up. If and, Denver takes Nodak tonight, I'm going to take BC's number one. Yeah. For yeah. sure, yeah. I would say, yeah, we will be watching that game. I mean, if Nodak yeah. just throws it down what on What do you them, got in that game? I'm going to take Nodak. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I'm taking Denver at home. <laughs> really? Yeah, defend tonight. If they, just they tonight. play again tomorrow, right? Yeah. I, yeah like, I'm almost just nervous saying my picks because, man, they were not correct last week. So That's part of the gig, man. We got to live <laughs> and die by your pick. <laughs> I'm going to go. Yeah, die on that hill. I'm going to go Nodak, Nodak because they see the door open for number one. Like every week we post our rankings. That's true. And every week we get ripped apart by Nodak fans. Like, what are you talking about? They're playing these teams. They'd be 500, whatever. That's true. 
I don't agree with those, their takes, but Nodak fans are crazy, and they I think they want to be number one. Like Nodak, if you're North Absolutely. Dakota, you want to be ranked. That's number one. their sport. It's college hockey. Exactly. It's not NBA. They it's have not an NFL. NHL rink for Christ's sake. Yeah. Like, yeah. They they want it, so they see. I mean, Denver's a big matchup too. So if they take it to, if they beat them decisively. Yeah, Denver's come. That's why I think Denver, one. man. They had a rough start to the season. And now they get to play in their home rink. I yeah. don't know. And they had you know guys out for World Juniors that cost yep, a couple that wins. that too. Yeah. So, so they they need this more than anything because, like I said, they don't have any you know real room for error to get back into the tournament if they keep dropping games like this. So yeah, it's tough in the NCHC for a reason. And uh, God, I wish the Bulldogs were playing this week. Yeah, that pisses me off. No dogs. Who else isn't playing for the NCHC? I think CC is out because they oh they played North Dakota on Monday and Tuesday. They did. But yep. Yeah, just weird, weird, weird times. Niagara keeps getting pushed back. That's you know just a a Bunsen burner. The whatever. Right trying, the balls. COVID's trying to shut them down. Yeah. Yeah. Just tough. Huntsville, nothing. Let's uh let's talk about this upcoming week and then wrap it up here. Yep. So let's jump in. We got a lot of games obviously coming up uh, on the weekend. It's the main slates, but I mean there's some scattered throughout. I think Thursday there's no games mm-hmm. coming up here. But uh, what's your biggest Game of the week. Give me your game of the week. Game so or far. series of the week? Series, yeah. Give me your series well, of the week. Uh, that's tough. That's really tough right now. Uh, I mean, are you pick Dub Cha Hockey East Big Ten? What what's uh, what's stand out? Because I know the Beavs are playing yeah. Bowling Green. Yeah, that's that... my that's my series of the week. I think I was thinking so. Just because those two, like that's going to come down to home ice in the playoffs and everything. Those are they're fighting for second seed. Yeah, basically right now, Beavs got that win, so now they're fighting. If they didn't get that one, they wouldn't be. But. Uh, if the bees can sweep this week and now they're sitting pretty because then they're done with bowling green for the season. Uh, I think they have Mankato one more time, but then they got some easier, not easier teams. There's no easy games, but less talented teams. I'd say um, the rest yeah. of the season, they can fight for that second spot. They're not getting that one spot over Cato, but I think, yeah, big rivalry there. And that's going to, it's now it's at home for the Beavers. I like that series. Um, I'm with you. Anything I, else as far as big 10 though, I like, you know, both teams getting swept in between uh, Michigan state and Ohio state. Both of those teams again fighting for the third seed. Probably I you saying both teams are going to sweep. no, like, no, no. Both teams fighting for a third, third, uh, <laughs> third seed. Probably fourth seed. But uh, that's again, that's home yeah. ice in the playoffs. So come down the road. There's I so don't many. Know. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, a lot of these matchups are going to be. Great. It's going to be close. Yeah, all like, around. Every conference has kind of <laughs> like their their top. So AIC Sacred Heart, I'd say top of the Atlantic. Both mm-hmm. teams. I mean, obviously Robert Morris having a year, but like last year, that was the the matchup. So I'm excited for that. Quinnipiac Clarkson currently in the ECAC. I think yeah. those are the two top teams. They haven't played yet i don't think have they no yeah so that's that's huge we already obviously got umass providence either of those teams i mean umass can be coming off a tough series with bu providence they need to win these kind of matchups they want to get into the top 10 mm-hmm. uh that'll be massive uh what else we got i think you know your, your dogs um having an off week with covid there they, yeah. now they got a hot western team who thinks they're all that coming course, into Buster. amsoil Buster. is this this will be the first games at amsoil this year no no, no they played their first they yeah. played their one I think series. they've had a tough time in, in amsoil so far but uh, they're a playoff team, so yeah. Regular and season. St. Saint Cloud, a good weekend to bounce well. back. Don't sleep on Miami, but a good weekend to bounce back for the for the Huskies there. And um, yeah, good luck scoring. It's but Ludwig, let's, let's talk about the other high school, ha, other high ski. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Let's, let's talk about the other Huskies right here, though. In Michigan, we got the rivalry. Mittens is heading to Michigan Tech, Oof. and um, our boy Bliss Dog. Yeah, that's a the, tough the Lakers have had a tough go kind of this season, and Michigan Tech hasn't been the best either. But uh, a good rivalry Michigan there. Michigan Tech's been solid. They just haven't played anybody. Like, yeah, it's mm, tough for them. Like they didn't I, they beat Mankato one game? I don't know. I don't think so. I thought they'd beat them once. Or actually, yeah, they did. They did. They split yeah, with Mankato. Yep. So that's. I mean, Should, they're yeah, decent. Michigan Tech's been good. They're six three and one. A, a sweep over Lake State would be huge for them this week, and so yep. that's that's the other series I want to watch out for. And then uh, maybe one of the hottest fan bases in college hockey. Um, they host the Northern Michigan Wildcats this week. Do you want to? <laughs> they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, that was the Chargers. I wanted to say series of the week because people forget they're coming off a sweep. Yeah, they're okay. coming off. They're going for three, maybe four in a row this week in front yeah. of the, one of the most loyal fan bases. I'm, I'm telling <laughs> you, hockey. our boys. So we got. I couldn't say that with all. Fifteen hundred. I mean, strong. Hey, that's that's fifteen hundred more fans, fans than the Beavers have had this year. Exactly. Total, so, and when you're playing them in in their own barn, isn't it at Huntsville? Yeah, it's at Huntsville. It's gonna be. Absolutely yeah, electric. Luck. Yeah. Imagine going to Huntsville in this kind of, you know, atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I mean, you show up knowing you're going to lose. I mean, they can't afford to replace them, but the speakers in that place, they yeah. probably get burnt out every week. I mean, oh, they're, <laughs> they're revved up. So I got Charger <laughs> fever. I'm going to say sweep. Northern Michigan has wow. looked atrocious this year. They are they have a worse record than Huntsville. Yeah. Two and eight. Huntsville's two, five and one. I mean, and, and they're a hot two, five and one. <laughs> so I'm taking, I got Charger fever. I'll I think go it's split. I think I'm going split. Okay, I, I I do think Griff Dog's gonna Griff show back up. Griff is just gonna up. be pissed. I think week. it's gonna be a chippy series with Griff out there and a Huntsville team. I mean, yeah, Griff's kind of like doing the Dennis Rodman year right now. Like yeah. I think he's just been partying in between. Like he doesn't give an f. The season's over. <laughs> no, you know, it's not over. He's ready for the senior year. 
I think he's going to come back and show out against Huntsville, but it won't be enough Chargers sweep. Okay, well, I'm going to go split there. Um, other than that, I mean, do we have any uh, big hockey East games? Yeah, B- yeah like main at BU, big rivalry. I think there. Northeastern, New Hampshire, like UNH is falling off the 3-7-1. and one. If they get swept by Northeastern this weekend, I think it's over for them, personally. Mm-hmm. I hate to say it. Like, obviously, injuries have been playing a factor. I mean, half it's COVID. Can't really blame them, but this is a big weekend for them. Like, they got to split. In my yeah, opinion, otherwise yeah. they're they're done. So I don't I do not want to sleep on one more team. Wisconsin's looked a lot better since getting their guys yeah, back. They have. they have a big series at Penn State, so let's not forget about that. And then a, and they're playing tonight, so we're recording this on Sunday. They yeah. already beat Arizona yeah, but State we're talking last night, the twenty first Thursday here. They they get right. Penn State for two, and then I'm another saying, rivalry, Michigan at Notre Dame. They'll be top ten. This if they beat Who? Arizona State tonight, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, yeah, easily. What about, what about I think Michigan's looked really strong. What about thinking you know they're moving, moving up to top ten? They weren't top ten last week. They're number ten. Oh, they were. Yeah, that's not. I should know my own rankings, but yeah, I it's thought, like I thought they were eleven. It's almost like I've been making them. Huh? Weird. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So they're they're number ten last week, I believe. They're moving on up. I mean, I think Omaha's out just because let's they let's let's do a couple predictions of the Big Ten across here. Who do you got next week in a series? Michigan or Notre Dame? You know, Michigan or Notre Dame. Notre Dame go sweep. I'm gonna go sweep. Yeah, I like that. I like that comment. But I'm gonna go sweep for Michigan on the road. And it, is it both? Or is it home and home? I would assume uh, it's not. No, 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 yeah, it's just on that at Notre Dame. So yeah, I'll go split just because Michigan usually. What about uh, Wisconsin, Penn State? Then... Penn State's won a couple too. So I mean, yeah, they're coming off a sweep. They, and Wisconsin looks good split. too, like we said. So who do you got there in that series? <sighs> I'm such a bitch. I'm gonna go split. <laughs> God, you're just a <laughs> fucking bitch. I'm if go... I had to pick a sweep, I'd say Wisconsin, <laughs> but if, it's at Penn State, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm picking a damn split, man. It's it, if it was at Wisconsin, they would sweep. I'd say, but uh. home advantage. Penn State did look really good this weekend. I'm going to pick... Um, Don't tell me what to pick, man. No, I'm not. I'm going to take Penn State sweep. Watch out for it. Right. I'm going bold You're here. going against your badge. <clears throat> yeah, I, I hate to do it, but I'm going to go on a limb here. And I could... I could. They might get swept. They might get swept. But I'm going to say, I'm just feeling Penn State right now. They've looked really good this weekend, so... They did. I mean, uh, Lamosh is heating up. Yeah, I mean... Go against them. Just because Wisconsin's on the road, I know there's no fans or anything, but it makes a difference once you're traveling. You're Plus, I mean, a different they rank. got uh, Tim Doherty. I hope I'm saying that right from Maine. He was one of the leading yep. scorers for yep. them last year. I I thought he was. Like, I was literally looking for him in the going. You know, like did he make a roster for this NHL? You know, oh, taxi yeah. squad. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh fuck, he's on Penn State and he's lighting it up. <laughs> he's lighting it up. Like, I mean, the guy's just a nitty line out of nowhere. <laughs> so they're picking up players left and right. Apparently, <laughs> man, this has been yeah. the weirdest year. Just following the like, guys yeah, transferring. Just, like, it's I like couldn't a... keep track of it all. I was like, they lost so many is guys is the... last year. They well, even merit. like this week, I saw who um, your guy from Creighton uh, join CC, and I was just right. like, when the fuck is this trade deadline? Like, <laughs> yeah, the guys doesn't... just keep joining teams at, at will. It doesn't end. I mean. I mean, I, is Jack gonna, Adams. <laughs> fuck. He's a friar. I mean, so many. I wouldn't be surprised parts. if Kyle Rudolph joined the Gophers heading into the tournament here. Like, yeah. who the fuck knows? Anything like, can happen. Yeah. I mean, I mean plus, what was it? Uh, Gophers Kyle defenseman. <laughs> can you imagine plugging that guy in front of the net? No. Gophers on the power play? Man. I mean, he might as well. The guy, he, he has no <clears> yards yeah. after the catch anymore. Yeah, Just Kirk put doesn't use him anyways, so might as well put him on the Gophers. But yeah. we got to stop talking like <laughs> 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 We could go all day ripping apart our boys. <laughs> But yeah, there's so many moving parts. So I think, you know, Penn State, it's it's going to be a split. <clears throat> they can score like they have, yep. they, you know, I don't know. It's going to be a crazy week of college puck, though. Yeah, it is. And uh, again, episode 53 here. Holy shit. This I has mean, been a, a doozy. This has been an absolute, not going to be fun for you yeah, to edit. Every but... week we said, like, we're like, all right, you know, it's, we got everything set up. Mm-hmm. You know, how come it took you so long? This is why. This is, yeah, no, yeah. This is it. There's this is, this too is much it. to talk about. Too much Vikings talk. I mean, we're just still rattled after this terrible season. But... Yeah, how are my Buccaneers doing right now? Yeah, I don't know. Fuck, six nothing. It's early, dude. It's the first quarter. And that's a wrap for episode 53 of Pucks in Deep. Another great episode. This week, another huge guest in Jack Adams from Providence. Um, they the fri- keep getting bigger. Yeah, they keep getting bigger. The Friars are hot. Watch out for them. But yeah, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page at Everything College Hockey. Mm. Hit us up on Instagram at Everything College Hockey, Twitter, Team mm. ECH, TikTok, mm. Everything College Hockey. Mm, mm, mm. Just hit them all, guys. Yeah. That really helps us out in the long run. And we're going to keep promoting this game, keep growing the game. And smash that like button. Too. Just smash and, like, it. That swipe up. Just, just, just smash it. Keep man. sharing our Nothing posts on your stories it. and everything, guys. The more numbers, you know, the, the, the more special it makes it for these players that get posted on this Instagram, the more that we're going to grow the game. Social media is so easy to grow this game. We can do it. We just need more shares and more subscribes. Keep the boys just juiced, man. We can do this until episode 54, man. That's a wrap. Yeah, let's uh, let's get pucked. Puck Steve, man. Frankie, play us out. Oh, Frank's not here. Oh, shit. (laughs) 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 (laughs)